Hi. Hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Awesome. Hi. 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 How are you doing? Good. How are you? I was I'm on the pure earth uh, handle and I kept saying hi hi hi. Right, 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 right. How is it going? Very good. All good. All good. Awesome. All good. So good to finally put a face against a name. <laughs> yes. Likewise. Awesome. So how's it going? Uh, you're in Hong Kong, right? As we speak. How how are yes, things in Hong Kong? Things are fine here. I mean, uh, cases have increased. Uh, I think post uh, uh, some little festive period, but eighty-one cases in Hong Kong. So trying to control it, but not too bad. Not like India. Yeah. Yeah. India. Yeah. India has accepted COVID as a part of its life, and we've moved on. And I can't be complaining. Most of us, you know, have it better than most out there. So yeah. Yeah. Counting up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So let's get into um, our chat. Uh, first up, welcome everyone for another episode of Cannabis and Beyond. With us, we have the wonderful Kavita Kosla from Hello. Pure, the founder of Pure Earth. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, all things cannabis, Ayurveda, personal care, and her philosophies uh, as well. Uh, so, Kavita, let's just start with breaking the ice. It'll be wonderful. I've gone through Pyora's journey, and it's a brilliant journey. So, why don't we tell you, you know everyone who's tuned in about your journey, about you, and about Pyora as well? Sure, sure. So, uh, hi everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this uh, uh, live Instagram show. I think it's going to be very exciting. Am I audible? All good. Yeah, can people just give a thumbs up if you all can hear us clearly? That really help. I can hear you quite clearly though. Okay, तो चलेगा. Okay, <laughs> so uh, there we go. So yeah, I am um, from Pune originally, and um, I moved to Hong Kong, and then I founded uh, Pure Earth in two thousand and. I founded it in 2011, launched it in 2018, and it's a clean skincare and wellness brand. And uh, um, my ingredients come entirely from India, uh, except for uh, a few things like uh, glycerin that I source from Germany. Uh, but otherwise, everything's from India, and a lot of it is from the Himalayan belt. And so. Right. for the longest time i have been wondering why are we not you know using hemp uh you know in in instead of the wider way that you know it can be used and then you know got to know about you and bohico and you know what you guys are doing so of course we are you know sourcing our hemp oil from you hoping right. to work a lot more with you guys and really you know sort of demystifying this whole thing about hemp and cannabis and Hopefully, you know, seeing wider use in India and globally. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. That that's such a heartwarming, uh, you know, understanding what your plans with hemp also are, understanding what yeah. you're doing. So uh, let let's talk a little about Ayurveda, right? Uh, mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Ayurveda, given that your deep understanding and uh, you know how deeply you're connected with Ayurveda as well? Do you think in today's day and age, are people Losing or gaining the importance of of Ayurveda, uh, and could you talk us through that? Uh, I would say it's uh, both. Uh, I would actually, you know, uh, sort of draw a parallel with yoga. So you know, yoga is over the last two decades, it's really gone mainstream. But along with that, like my Guruji Prashant Ayenga says, the ignorance of yoga has truly spread. So similarly with Ayurveda, I think there's more interest than ever before globally, also in India. But you see, ये Google की वजह से there is a lot of um, you know Google searching for little knowledge is dangerous. Yeah. And so you know you Google something on a certain ingredient or a herb or a, a recipe, and uh, you know you think you can use it, and and you know, but that's not how it works. So the ignorance is spreading, but also the interest and the uh, uh, the whole practice of Ayurveda, and of course with the Ministry of Ayush now, you know, it's exciting times for us, you know, as we take Ayurveda mainstream in in India and globally. Yeah. Right. 
no absolutely and and you hit it kind of spot on right half knowledge is dangerous people kind of read you know whatever there is of the internet and come up with their own theories you know and it's very important though ayurveda is based on plant science and things like that people still need to be made aware about the real oh, yeah. ayurveda science and combine it with probably modern day use and make the best of both the worlds awesome so yes. on that let's let's just take this as a hook and move forward uh, your thoughts on hemp and cannabis given that you know currently cannabis as a plant has gone through like a historic uh, yeah. i'd say gone you know with the historic vote coming out um, and yeah. being reshaped what are your thoughts on hemp and cannabis and how it can be integrated in people's lives you know i'll start with a little story an anecdote so two two anecdotes okay so one is the when i was a kid when i was a kid i remember my mother on uh, she was a big shiv bhakt and i distinctly remember i must have been 8 6 8 something like that uh uh-huh. she was flying high she was flying high she was holding the bed and saying i am flying you know hold me down so that's my first memory of bhanga and then when i started pure earth i uh, went up to himachal for a sourcing trip and we were going up into lag valley and uh, along the way i got stung by a nettle bichu a nettle bush okay and it's if you've been stung i don't know if you've not been stung but it's extremely <laughs> you know it's like a jolt it's painful and because it's sudden out right. of the blue and uh, i got stung on my leg and bigma the 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 coordinator in that village she immediately picked up a plant and crushed it in her hand you know and applied it and it was like a salve i'm telling you you know there was this immediate sort of sense of i don't know psychosomatic or sense of relief and that was bhanga that was you know the hemp plant right so that was my first interaction so to speak of course i've been up to tibet two decades ago i've been throughout the whole tirat yatras and all of that so i'm familiar with him but uh, this first interaction like this you know where you have it as an antidote you know in the wilderness and you know in kumau people have chutney of of both hemp and nettle and i remember traveling all around and saying you know the income generation opportunities are immense with this wide himalayan belt and it grows so wild and why you know why cannot we as a country why cannot we as a world you know uh, and the plant uses go beyond medicinal and beyond you know and fibers and all kinds of things right so i was really excited uh, about the potential for it and of course right. today we have this historic vote and hopefully and india has voted for a yes you know at the as we know so right. it's it's exciting you know what what potential it holds and uh, of course doing it legally doing it uh, with the right oh. laws with the right licensing but it's uh, it holds immense immense uh, uh, opportunity and excitement both topically and also you know ingesting it yeah very exciting awesome great great times ahead for everyone you know working yes. in the industry and world over yes. the benefits like you mentioned of the hemp plant are infinite and just because it got clubbed as a narcotic or a drug yes uh, yes it has been quite ruined i'd say over the past few decades but better yes. late than never i guess you yes. know the research is coming about awesome so um you uh, i'm you know i'm sure you've experienced the medical benefits or the therapeutic benefits of cannabis hemp through either in the form of hemp seed oil or cbd yeah. and things like that yeah. so and it's about pure earth and how pure earth was the vision of pure earth and how they plan how you all plan to use hemp and uh, cbd or you know any other form in your products so currently we are only using uh, so we're using hemp hearts the seed in our uh, one of our uh, uptans and of right. course the oil you know the beautiful oil we are using it in uh, quite a few of our uh, formulations very complex formulations uh, right. cream formulations as well as an oil formulations so uh-huh. you know it's really exciting and as we know that hemp uh is one of the five sacred plants you know in the vedas the atharva veda mentions five sacred plants and right. hemp is one of them so its importance in ayurveda 
is so firmly ensconced and established so the times ahead i'm really excited to work you know with you guys and look into are you hearing some kind of uh, static or some kind of echo no it's it's quite clear at my end uh it's okay, better now is it better it's better yeah okay strange yeah i don't know okay yeah, yeah. that that's better so where were we so yeah um uh, uh, i'm really excited to work with hemp and cbd um you know minus the th thc and and you know the the uh, it's it's kind of it's it's whole form the full spectrum form and as we are seeing research is showing you know it postulates that uh, this you know this entourage effect as they are calling it right the right. synergistic effect of a whole plant as opposed mm-hmm. to an isolate you know uh, somehow it seems to work better the whole botanical plant works better has a better efficacy as compared to you know taking an isolate out so really excited to work uh, um, you know on uh, hemp and it's it's you know like okay the seeds or the the leaves and you know the different ways that we can use it um mm. both medicinally under prescription with licenses and then also topically so yeah the way forward is um, yeah it's exciting yeah it's very exciting you know for everyone and india is very kind of new to this space of working with cannabis and we have our own take on it i'd say with the mm. western on isolation and now out there to the thousands of options now but in india yeah. because it- to to our roots you know uh, working with the plant in its holistic or its true and natural form is the best way to go yes, about it i yes. 100% agree with you uh, so in fact uh, you know yeah. I, i want to ask you a question yash you know see uh, in in california and in the west you have all these uh, uh, synthetic uh, cannabis forms what yes. is your take on it given that we just talked about you know the holistic approach like the ayurvedic holistic approach to botanicals and i'm such a purist that for me you know it's the whole plant you know in its most pure natural form like you know if you take the analogy of milk and 2% and fat free and this reduce that like i i just don't think you know uh, that's how we should be eating you know uh, i won't even call it a diet but consuming food should be as whole as unprocessed as possible that's what i right. mean so this whole synthetic and then all these different names and these strains and all what's what's your like view on it because you have you're the expert in this yeah no sure sure see uh, i'll tell you what uh, now the thing is that there is a lot of meddling of science with nature right and people want different strains and in that kind of need to find a niche for themselves people are going and rediscovering the plant if i may put it like that right now what happens is i personally and also science has said it that the that the plant was designed to do a certain job right uh, and the it, design works in such a way that you need to use the entire plant in its true and natural form to get those real benefits but uh, what also happens on there's a flip side to it right there are pros and cons now say for example there is someone when we talk about full spectrum it also includes t though thc has extreme mm. benefit but there is also the flip side where one can get that sense of euphoria or that feeling of mm. high now in a lot of cases when there are medicines right when we're talking about medicine to say children right with epilepsy t mm. yeah. is really act uh, in a good way for them when we're talking about medicine for say pets right mm. uh, in fact do not enjoy that feeling of high because thc kind of clouds their mind and they're very confused things like that that's when isolation can really come about where you can really get the benefit of cbd but without that feeling of high right and um, unfortunately there are these two sides of the coin where there is no right or wrong i'd say uh, but mm-hmm. you know one thing i would say is is wrong is over synthesizing the plant and really putting it through a certain process that it's not designed for in fact i have come across this one variety where uh, where uh, thc isolation happens and it has happened to the tune of 99% purity now that kind of level of mm. thc extremely dangerous in fact yes. it can cause things like psychosis and what not 
right yes. so i definitely would not uh, i'd say wow chart say that is the way to go and things like say as much as possible through a natural form but there needs to be variety so that different groups or subsects or uh, of patients and consumers can yes. also access this medicine for its other benefits uh, per se so that's my yes. view on it yeah okay interesting yes cuz you know this uh, thc yeah as i was also looking up the research uh, pure thc actually uh, induces psychosis and panic and anxiety attacks whereas actually thc the cbd is what kind of balances it out and it's it doesn't give you that high it actually makes you calm and you know it's 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 um, that overall sense of well-being comes from the cbd part of it like right. both of part of it and you know they they both can't do without each other and when you yes. combine that yes, stuff yes it's yeah magic right? yeah it's magic yeah uh, i mean yeah. yeah there's a lot of science that has come in and meddled with how nature needs mm-hmm. to take shape uh, i'd also say that in some cases it happened for the benefit where pure cbd helping kids with epilepsy outstanding like there's yes. some brilliant studies you know yes. and we'll take yes. away from that so like i said two sides of the coin we pick up and stuff um so since you i think we're talking about this topic of you know education and how people need to be aware about what right for them and what's not when since you've started using hemp seed oil have you had people come over and had have an interesting take on on hemp seed oil right and i'll tell you why i'm asking that since the time we're selling clothes people the most frequently asked question to us is that if i wear this hem shirt will i get high <laughs> right and i'm not in you kidding. really get that question most asked question till date most asked question <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm right okay yeah. uh yeah no we uh, well i haven't uh, been asked uh, uh, strange questions on hem uh, of course the usual question that comes is this has hem will it make me high <laughs> uh and we like no its thc level is below 0.3% uh also uh you know it is it is uh, um it's not from the flowering uh, uh, i mean it's not an isolate and it's not from the flowering part of the plant it's the leaf so there's no problem um but we did, we did as you're aware you know we will uh with uh, somebody in uh, dubai in the middle east they wanted to register uh, the brand and the product and so the hemp oil has uh, i mean there's literally you'd say 2% hemp oil in the formulation and the hemp oil itself uh you know there's a certification which says it has no it, you know no no psychotropic uh, thc and uh, and that's fine the oil is fine but then when the oil is in the formulation uh you have to take the formulation through a whole accredited lab test in india which apparently only governmental organizations can get done brands can so that was really interesting that uh, there is so much uh, fear of uh, something like hemp oil uh, in so many countries where uh, you know i mean the logic doesn't apply even that if the oil itself doesn't have anything how can 2% of that oil for example or 1% of that oil in a formulation cause any kind of you know psychotropic effect so that kind of uh, uh you know uh, um what should we call it you know uh, it's frustrating yeah it's frustrating you know a lot of education and awareness is is uh, needed very much the need of the hour um uh, but yeah we just we are asked you know and also because ours is topical you know it's not ingestible or sublingual so but we do get asked will this make me high and we're like no you don't need to worry about that <laughs> So do you really have to come people about the benefits of hemp seed oil given that it's so much like full of misinformation do you really have to put the medal there uh no that we not because people somehow uh our clients somehow seem to really uh whether they understand it or they just take it at face value that ayurveda mein bhangasi with us with india with the country you know it's not a new uh plant Mm. to almost the entire country we know lord shiva we know mahashivratri so in the bhanga form there is understanding and awareness already you know um but now in terms of uh, modern day use you know of the counter and in products uh, people seem to just 
you know, take it for granted that yes, this is going to have a good effect on me on my skin. Uh, just that, yeah, the question that comes is, oh, will this make me high? I mean, does it have, uh, you know, does it have anything that will make me high or that those questions? But the efficacy and its uh, value, uh, bioavailability through the skin, <laughs> that's not questioned by any of our clients. No. Got yeah. it. Got it. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm just going to stop here and take some questions from some people who've joined in. Uh, yeah. Asking where can they buy your products in India? Uh, so if you could just take that up. Sure. So we are in Delhi at the Silhouette at Oberoi. We are at Angadi in Bangalore. Uh, uh, yeah, in Bangalore. We are in Kochi at Cult Modern. Uh, we are in Pune at our own studio and we are online. Yeah, we're online acro across India. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you have your own third, uh, your own e-commerce website, Pyorak.com. Yes. yes, yes. So people, so everyone looking to get your hands on Pyorak products, go to Pyorak.co.in and you can have it. Um, another question, I'm just, I think it's for me and if you don't mind, I'm going to quickly take it. Would you guys hop to THC if legalized in India? Um, so, uh, Anil Ban, right. Thanks for that question. Uh, uh, of course, if we're talking about the medical values, we definitely uh, would like to see how we can use and unleash the medical benefits of cannabis and most definitely. But if we're talking about recreational, um, I mean, to be honest, at this moment, there are no plans for that. Um, you know, we want to focus on making sure that patients or people in the real need of the products can get access to that. Um, and uh, eventually, over a period of time, we can, uh, you know, see how we want to navigate that. Um, another quick question, is there a legal barrier to market cannabis-based products as an unplugged or recreational products? Uh, so, uh, I mean, would you like to take that very quickly? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is my legal hat on. Uh, yeah, for those of you guys, I mean, I introduced myself. So I've practiced law for 15 years. So I did my sanad in India, but I'm also like, you know, a lawyer in Hong Kong and England and Wales. So uh, putting my legal hat on, uh, recreation, is, it's not allowed under the Narcotics or Whatever Drugs Act. Uh, recreation is not allowed. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, Bhanga. So the leaves are allowed in the form of oil is allowed. The flowering top is uh, is uh, illegal. It's not allowed. And other parts of the plant are not allowed. And of course, no isolates and anything that has the THC is not allowed. But otherwise, uh, you know, oil in the form from the leaf. And guys, you know, it's called Vijaya in uh, Sanskrit and Bhanga in common parlance. In, yeah, in, in Ayurveda, it's called Bhanga. Uh, Sanskrit is called Vijaya. So, um, uh, but yeah, the THC part of it is uh, what is controversial and that's the part that gets you high um, and causes that euphoria. It's a psychotropic, that part of it. So that is not um, legal. Um, you know, interestingly, my son, uh, he's studying at Berkeley in California and two years ago, they legalized it. Was it two years yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah. Two, around California. Ha. Huh. So he, uh, of course, underage, you know, and he says, you know, I can stand in the middle of the road in front of a police officer and I can smoke a joint, but I can't have a beer, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, so that's the it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So just to add to your answer, right? Like if you see India has a huge uh, cultural and historical relationship with the plant, right? Uh, there are some states four to be specific, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan and UP, where even if you all around the year, you have the local bhang shops, right? Where someone can go and buy bhang and have the thandai. So recreational in that form is something that is uh, ah. permitted. For, true, for true, you're right. Right? But you're whereas, right, you're right. Uh, and in rest of India, only on like some festivals like Holi, Mahashivratri, etc. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it's otherwise no. Uh, and also the NDPS Act, uh, 1985 Section 14 clearly allows for uh, hemp and cannabis cultivation for its horticultural and industrial. Mm -hmm. use. The state topic. Each and every state has their own way yeah. to kind of develop a policy. So. Uh, one more question, we'll quickly. Someone said excellent products, both brands. So thanks, Praveen. Thank uh, 
of of the both of us. Uh, where are you buying your raw products? Um, I think this question. I quickly take this. So we work with over 500 farmers from the state of Uttarakhand. From and we've set up our own supply chain uh, where we are procuring the hemp seeds from, and uh, we're pressing it in a GMP grade facility in Madhya Pradesh. Um, so that's how where our raw material comes from. But the cannabis leaves. Uh, because it's a there is potential of abuse that is sourced directly from the government. The government has their own collection centers where they collect the bhang from the length and breadth of the country, and there's a quota system. So you apply for the quota and you collect. So the leaves that come straight uh, straight from the government. Um, now we'll quickly before we take more questions and guys, I'll do my best to take everyone's questions. Thank you. Please keep them coming in. Um, we'll uh, coming back to our chat, right, Kavita. how well does hemp seed oil work as an ingredient in the personal care industry right you've experienced it first hand and uh, how, how would you say how can people really integrate hemp seed oil in their personal care routine as well you know it's it's an oil that could be used head to toe and you can also drink it you know i mean right. it's uh, it, it's like some of the other like it's a base oil first of all so you don't need to worry about overusing it that that's the one wonderful thing about it the uh, the other thing about so if you look at botanicals uh, there are something and you'd be of course aware of this called terpenes now yep. terpenes right so in in hemp uh, uh, the hemp plant is called terpenoids and uh, you know not the, the terpenes give you that uh, uh, fragrance part that's a fragrance constituent yep. or molecule of the plant so also it has been shown that the terpenes in the cannabis plant in the hemp plant um along with the cbd the cannabidol you know along with that they actually have a very synergistic wonderful effect on skin so hemp oil now see there is usually this miss uh, this myth that oils are not good for acne skin or for young skin but actually hemp oil has a perfect ratio of omegas 369 perfectly right. balanced in nature so this particular oil is fantastic for somebody who has very dry and mature and sun damaged skin but also for a 14 year old who is just fully you know uh, come out in in acne and uh, um, you know any form of acne so hemp oil actually balances you know uh, your ph i mean oils don't balance any ph but uh, it really actually helps to calm the skin down and the sebum overproduction so right. it actually has wonderful topically as a skin care you know as right. a skin care oil it is one of the most perfect oils you can say you know uh, uh for a wide range of uh, skin concerns and for all skin types and all ages yeah right also quick fun fact about hemp seed oil it's got a very low comedogenic score right it's practically huh. non comedogenic thereby making absorption of the oil a, a lot better it does not block your pores it kind of seeps okay. right in kind of yeah. and that helps in things like acne and all Uh, and also you know like oils now it's a difficult i mean you know you can't say it's a dry oil or a oil oil but you know like a um, like like an almond oil or an avocado oil or a castor oil they're very heavy you know uh, whereas uh, like like a hemp oil it just sucks into skin it's you can almost it's like a dry oil you know so it's not heavy on the skin it's a very quick absorbing uh, right. light uh, density oil so that's right. again wonderful you can just apply the soil and if i'm not mistaken it has very very low uh, spf factor yes Temple. it does yeah. right given the humid conditions in india that people live in yeah. i think perfect oil yeah. uh so uh keeping the topic of hemp on the side for a moment right you also are a great uh, social activist right and a lot of brands today these days want to stand for a cause they want to have a certain purpose but sometimes they find it very tough in their journey to kind of make a purpose out of their entire vision and also at the same time be monetarily sustainable so any thoughts or any suggestions or any advice for you know smaller brands that are looking to make like any cause a social cause is part of their purpose so for me i am <laughs> whether it's a good or a bad thing i don't know i think my family is fed up and many people are fed up of my very uh, out and out social activist 
you know uh, kind of personality but uh, i pure earth was founded on this ethos itself so i wasn't right. looking to start a charity and i wasn't looking to start a skincare brand or any brand or any i'm, I'm a reluctant entrepreneur right. i just wanted to come back to india i wanted to work you know with the soil i wanted to work with women and what floats my boat or what i'm passionate about is uh, uh, income generation you know income independence for women right. and from there arose the brand so it's a bit difficult for me to answer the question like how do you uh, uh, kind of you know how do you work with a cause as a brand because my brand came about because of the cause you know uh, but yeah for brands who want to uh, i think you have to be very uh, genuinely passionate about whatever cause it is it could be children's education it could be uh, uh, the soil it could be women it could be the elderly it could be the environment climate change but whatever it is you need to genuinely genuinely live breathe eat talk that you know and walk the talk uh uh yeah and as a brand that's how you gain that validity in your you know uh, client's eyes because you're really walking the talk and you know it it comes through in everything you do in everything right. you do yeah so no point genuine passion right right and no point having as a projection piece because people can see through it and they're going to call you out so if you yeah. really do believe on or on a certain topic then you might as well kind of live it and breathe it like you mentioned fantastic yeah. advice i uh, by really doing it is the only way to kind of show it also uh, i'll again go back to some quick questions some very interesting questions have come up uh, one question for me if you don't mind once again why aren't we switching to hemp biodiesel or hemp battery given that it's super easy to make and cost a fraction great question actually it's a very good use of the hemp plant in fact we have actually partnered with the university in pune um, itself right and we created this uh, it was just you know out of kick and because you know we wanted to see that we can do it uh, but we made hemp biodiesel right with this one innovate in karan sir sir yes and uh, we actually used that hemp uh, biodiesel put it in an engine in a tata nano car uh, and you won't believe the kind of performance we we kind of got uh, at the end of it it was unbelievable but uh, my friend the thing is that these things can only be applicable and scaled up once there is significant scale at a cultivation level uh, where a bit i mean not bit we're quite early actually uh, you know before these things can actually become a reality but uh, there is innovation there is research that has happened on this uh, again someone's asking again where to buy the product for pure earth products please visit pureearth.co.in a fantastic range uh, some which have hemp and some without hemp as well i swear by them too and our products you can go to bohicolife.com uh, someone's asked would you tell me more about the legality of farming hemp in india uh, clear right now for commercial cultivation of hemp only the state of uttarakhand is giving out licenses uh, so yes if you are based in uttarakhand or uh then you can get a commercial license otherwise there are other states like uttar pradesh jammu madhya pradesh that are giving out research licenses and you could approach those mm-hmm. states as well. um and there are multiple startups in california who found more uses right so uh come that almost brings us to the end of the ch- of the chat um is there um you know anything you'd like to kind of as parting thoughts share with uh you know people who stuck till the end and thank you guys for whoever stuck and fantastic thank you so much right yeah i mean uh, you know uh, uh, i think the future you know uh, when it comes to hemp it comes to cbd uh, especially its therapeutic medicinal uses is uh, it's very exciting and i think it behoves on everybody to read up and to know more and you know and also in that way by themselves you know create that kind of awareness um and uh, you know really yeah uh, look out for hemp cbd products and uh, um, with the proper li- you know brands that have proper licensing and uh, uh, yeah it's i mean to me it's very very exciting very exciting um, awesome no yeah yeah yeah, yeah please go on. yeah i mean i mean that's about it you know like we are coming up with supplements and uh, uh, then again you know looking into a uh, hemp uh, for the supplements and also sublingual um um what i would love to do is aroma therapy with 
uh, with CBD. Uh, like I talked about terpenes, you know, uh, I think the synergistic uh, value and effect of using um, different and with, with, you know, consulting an Ayurvedic uh, uh, practitioner, uh, using aromatherapy and certain, you know, uh, volatile constituents with uh, hemp uh, would be very exciting, you know. Uh, for, for sublingual use and also topical use. We'll see. No, awesome. Definitely, guys. We're also working on some very exciting things with Kavita and her team. And yes. hopefully in the future, once it kind of takes shape, you guys will yes. know about it. But um, yes. such a fantastic chat. And, you know, Rohit Yadav has put it up very beautifully that don't panic, it's organic. Uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> to sum up. I think that from Hong Kong, Again, uh, working with, um, you know, organic CBD oil, you could probably connect. Um, but otherwise, thank you, Kavita. Thank you so much for your time. And what a lovely thank chat. I've as well. And I look forward to staying in touch with you. Um, Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This Until next time. Everyone. Until next time. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.